welcome back to the channel it's wednesday today um i've got a busy day planned well, hopefully uh first job is this 140 lcr dash five um from what i gathered they ran it out of ad blue and it's had a scr malfunction on the screen ever since so um yeah we'll get a look at what the error codes are on it might just need reset um, but I don't know what the codes are yet to know what it is. So, yeah, there we go. Look, SCR malfunction. I knock that annoying buzzer off. God, it's in the right pickle. Look at all those lights on there. Look, hundreds. Uh, I'll go into the service menu and I get all these cleared out. Check, check, check. Showing add blue level is empty. But is it actually empty? That is the question. So we'll pull the service menu up. Come on, service menu. Failure information, real time failure. Oh my word. Got loads, right. <clears throat> so, first one is dosing reagent, absolute pressure low. So the ad blue pressure is low. Next one. Add blue tank level low, add blue tank level low, add blue tank level low. So the operator has had many opportunities to fill the add blue, but uh, it's been ignored and now it's in inducement. I see that add blue pressure fault just disappeared from the top. And then they've got some more disappeared. So what are we left with? Is the add blue, add blue reading full now? Hmm. So maybe it just needs reset now. Um, yeah, basically, when you run these machines that low of ad blue, it puts it into inducement. And I think, I'm hoping anyway, I'll do some checks. But I think it'll just need reset now. I'll put my laptop on it, um, I'll start it up, and I'll check what the ad blue pressure's reading. Um, and we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Yeah, it's still flashing at me. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably just end up resetting this and it should be okay. We'll so see. I've got connected with my laptop and I've just double checked what the active codes are. Um, basically, the active events here are two operator inducements. Um, so the machine is still in inducement. I think we just start the machine up and keep an eye on the add blue pressure which is here you can see it's reading like what's that kpa not 0.4 bar we start up we're looking for five bar on these machines which is 500 kpa so as the machine warms up we can see the add blue pressure starting to ramp up where it's priming at the moment at least In, once the engine's warmed up, we should see that ad blue pressure start to increase. So I'll come back to you once the ad blue pressure's up to where it should be, hopefully. Yeah, you can see it's ramping up now. So it'll go to about just shy of 500 bar, uh, 500 kPa, which is 5 bar. So that's the ad blue going through the ad blue injector just now it, it won't be dosing at the moment until the machine's sort of worked for a bit and i can see now that the inducement codes have all disappeared so what we'll do is we'll work the machine there we go look it's gone up to nearly six bar which is that's about right that um, we'll work the machine now uh, for 15 20 minutes or so and just keep an eye on this ad blue pressure make sure it's stable because we did have a logged event of uh, ad blue pressure low um, but I think that's because the tanks being that low that the ad blue pump has got a gulp of air if it's been on an incline and uh, it's lost pressure these tanks you can't you, the add blue tank on these machines i'm pretty sure it's for all machines but on these machines you can't physically suck all the add blue out of the tanks so the add blue tanks dry 
The tank capacity is just over 20 litres and when the add blue light comes on you won't get a 20 litre drum tipped into that tank without it over spilling. So in the add blue tank you've got there'll be there should be anywhere an air gap in the add blue tank when it's reading full and that allows for if you get cold weather the add blue will freeze up and that allows for the expansion of it so it won't split the tank and then also when you run the add blue down to the point where the red lights on and it's telling you to fill up there should always be a buffer of add blue sitting in the tank which is normally around about four and a half five liters so you should never really be able to physically run the machine out of ad blue although the ad blue level light is on <clears throat> um, that doesn't mean to say if you're working on a batter you know they're on with shifting muck away at the minute see that two three five working there doesn't mean to say if you tracked off a batter or something like that there's no to say that you can't grab a gulp of air which would then put the uh, you know give it an ad blue pressure fault um, there is a chance obviously that there is an issue but uh, the fact that it's keeping a nice stable pressure there just now makes me think that they've just run it out of ad blue they've got a gulp of air and uh, that's what's been the matter with it so i'll dig some fresh air for a bit and uh, see how it goes um it's just disappeared now but the it came up with the engine management light as i've been digging a bit of fresh air and you can see what it does when you're working it, you can see what the current pressure is, which does seem to be a bit erratic. Uh, you can see what the minimum pressure was while you're on this screen and the max pressure. You can see it's jumped up to 600 kPa there and the lowest point has been 470, so it is a little bit erratic. Um, and when it gets above 6 bar, I think that's, uh, yeah, 6 bar. I think that's the threshold for putting an add blue pressure high fault on, which is what it keeps throwing up. Uh, I'm going to log the events because it'll be logged now rather than an active one. Uh, uh, it's this one here. After treatment, see it's. Oh. Yeah, it's come back on again, just idling, look. Uh, add blue pressure high, moderate severity. It's been doing this. The, the driver's just been over and had a chat to us. It's been doing it for a little while where it puts a, like an engine management light on and then it disappears and you can see it's logged it. It's done it 208 times. Um, so what could cause that? It could be filter and it could be a blue injector not opening. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is pull that exhaust cover off and we'll have a look at the filters on it as well. Yeah. Also noticed as well, just uh, they had 40, 40 counts of the ad blue pressure being low, so the ad blue pressure's all over the place. I've got a feeling it could be that injector, but we'll find out in a minute. Right, so I know, I mean, the conventional 14 tonners are more so than the zero tail swings. These ad blue tanks can be awkward to fill, um, and when I see a funnel like that with built up urea in the funnel neck that does give me a little bit of uh, anxiety like um, I mean really what you should be doing is getting a brand new drum or a, a, a drum you've only used a few times and using the filler neck that you screw onto the drum and putting the filler neck into there and then tipping the drum up to fill the ad blue um, I really don't like to see that. So I'll pull the filters. There's a suction filter on the end of the, um, whatchamacallit doodah here. What is it called? Come on Al. Level quality sensor. Um, there's a suction filter on there. It's like a tea bag. Um, I'll pull that out and I'll also, once I've got into the tank, I'll check the ad blue quality as well. Um, but to get that out, I've all this step to disassemble and uh, take the blue pump off altogether as well so 
that's what I'm going to do before I start taking that cover off up there and looking at the injector. Just when I see that, uh, just a bit wary about what's going to be in this tank. Right, so here's the outcome. Uh, I've got the tank unit out. This muck around this lip here, it can't be helped. That header unit there has got a rubber seal on, which does, as you can see, this bit's nice and clean. Um, but it's stupid really, it does allow silt in, so when you do pull the header unit out, there is a chance that you can, muck can drop in there. So I'm gonna, well, I'll show you this now, look. See that? That is more than likely getting put into the tank through that. Um, and let's have a, try and get my head in, hang on. Yeah, there's a bit of a, can you see that sheen on the top of the tank? Like, you know, if you were to drop a spot of oil onto a puddle, you get that rainbowy sheen. Don't like that either. So, next job now is pull the tank out, give it a right good clean up. That's the tea bag filter I was telling you about. You can well imagine um, that is restricting our blue flow, which is what's giving you the ad blue pressure faults low and high because it's struggling to draw ad blue out the tank. It's kind of up in the pump motor duty to try and keep the ad blue pressure stable, and it gets a gulp, and it's sort of you've got to build up the pressure. But yeah, everything just wants a right good clean. That needs thrown in the bin. Or at least not used for ad blue. Yeah. So I've got that ad blue draining and uh, I'll change these filters now. And I'll grab a clean rag and give that tank a good wipe out once it's uh, empty. So that's the colour of the ad blue filter. Now normally they sort of turn like an off white colour. Um, they had to replace every 1500 hours. I don't know when this one will have last been changed, but I've never seen it before. There's loads of sediment on the inside of there where the ad blue filter sits. So I'm gonna try and use a clean cloth, uh, give it a clean out. Ad blue has drained just about. Have a look in there. Oh, look, can you see that? On the wall of the ad blue tank there, all that crust. That isn't good like. But it's funny, I noticed with that fuel tank when I did that fuel job the other week, they never put a drain tap or a drain bung right in the corner. I mean, this one is right in the corner, but it sits about an inch higher than the floor of the tank. So if that was in situ, you could drain the tank, but you're gonna have an inch left at the bottom. It was the same with that fuel tank. You couldn't get every last drop out of it. You had to put rags in there and soak it all up. Why is that? There'll be a reason for it, like, you know, if that bung was in the bottom of there, you could tip it over to one corner and pretty much drain it all out. Funny. Anyway, continue cleaning. So everything's all mopped out and clean. I'm gonna put this back in the tank just now while it's handy because it's a bit awkward to get out with the tank in such a okay, twist and turn it a bit. I'll put it in the other hand so I'll just switch it off a sec. Okay, that's the tank, uh, ad blue tank fitted. I've just refilled the ad blue tank, blown through all the lines. We are able to start it now. Um, so yeah, like I was saying to you before, that tank was bone dry empty and it's now brim full and you can see there's that much left in the tank, or in the drum. I've said it before, what people will do then is uh, they'll take that drum, put it in the back of the car, nice warm day like today, car internal temperature will be 25, 30 degrees, it'll sit in the back of the car or the van. And then uh, in a week, week's time, when that ad blue runs out, they'll grab that drum, they'll fill it up from an IBC, 
and I'll put it into the machine and again you'll be left with that sort of litre and a half, two litres in that drum and it'll go back in the van it'll warm up and basically I've used this analogy so many times before probably half a dozen times on the channel if you take a pint glass put orange squash in it drink three quarters of the orange squash put the same amount of squash back in it drink three quarters of the amount of squash eventually that squash is going to get more and more concentrated and that's a similar principle to reusing drums all the time yeah crack on you reuse them for you know half a dozen times but don't i wouldn't recommend using the same drum over and over and over and over again like i wouldn't but uh, that's my recommendation anyway that's my thoughts on it hey i'll put the isolator back on and uh Fire it up and have a look at this update pressure now. I know you lot love looking at my mucky laptop screen. You can see there now the pressure is a lot more stable. You know, it's it's hardly budging from five and a half bar. You remember earlier in the video it was sort of it was fairly sort of skipping about to be fair. But I've not left five and a half bar now for the last five minutes. You know, it hasn't even gone to 5.6 or 5.4 yet. That 420 to the right hand side there, that's when uh, I sort of first started it. So that's looking like a win. Stay tuned for more information. Yeah, I've just loosened the uh, belt tensioner. Um, the fan bearing's okay, but the belt tensioner bearing is serviceable, but it is on its way out. So I'll let their engineer know about that. I'm sure they'll be happy to put that on themselves. Uh, right, I'm gonna pack up now. Uh, next job is over behind that hill not far away. The 160 high track. Um, complaint that the controls are a little bit jerky so we'll go and have a look at pressures and just make some adjustments probably, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah I'm gonna pack up from here now. Right I've just had my lunch. Um, yeah I will buy it as well. Um, they haven't owned that machine from brand new. I think they've only had it about eight months. It came from a It came from an auction, so there's no saying that that stuff in that tank and that had blue filter, etc. wasn't already in there when they picked the machine up. And um, they're normally very good with AdBlue. They run a lot of Doosan machines. I think they've three 14 tonners, four 20 tonners, a two three five, a three forty, a few six tonners. So, yeah, they're normally pretty well behaved. Right, onwards into right here. It's, it is the Lake District, but it's, I mean, I'm kind of in the Lake District now, I suppose, but um, this will be kind of on a hill on the outside of the Lake District. Yeah, I'm going next. <clears throat> All done. <laughs> Everybody's going, that fixed, that good. Yeah, yeah, mate, crack on. Right, see you at the next one.
Look at the spots you get to with this job. What a road as well. Goodness me. I wasn't expecting a view like this. Absolutely magnificent. Today is a good day. just around the corner over there. And I think that one's got an oil leak from what I've gathered. That's the way to go and get a new pipe. Marvellous. What a place! Do you know, I only live 45 minutes, an hour from here. Never been here before. Absolutely stunning life. Lucky to live and work in a part of the world or a corner of the country like this. This fellow on the seat's from Yorkshire and he reckons Yorkshire's God's country. <laughs> This is where it's at. Right, we'll have a crack. So I'm just after um, looking at this machine. Basically, the, it, it's a bit of a controllability fault. Um, it, it, it sort of feels a bit sharp and jerky. Anyway, the pilot pressure was ever, slight, ever so slightly too high. So I've backed that off and it does seem an awful lot better. Um, I've sort of adjusted the flow ever so slightly. You don't really want to be adjusting the flow too much blind without a flow meter on it. Um, and everything sort of feels a little bit better. Um, there was a lot of play in these joysticks, um, which is adjusted by taking the boot up, uh, slackening that one and winding this plate down. And you just want a tiny, tiny little bit. Anyway, I got this one done, um, if anything that one's a little bit too tight I need to back it off ever so slightly but when I went to have a try of it this joystick just felt really odd without this rubber attached down here and what I'll show you is if I push that joystick forward it springs back in all directions whereas this one uh, if I pull it back it springs back left right but if i push it forward it stays up and i bet with that boot on it'll have been acting a bit more like a spring so i think the spring is or at least a coil has snapped in there see and that'd be why the machine feels a bit weird to drive <laughs> not come across that before on a 160 or a I've come across it on a, what did I come across it on? A 27, if you go back to one of my videos, there's a 27 that had done the same, or similar. There we go. Right, so I need to get parts ordered for this now. So I've got all the joystick uh, built back up now. I'll say built back up, I've put all rubber on. You can see how that rubber helps it back. Whereas before, without that rubber, it would sit forward. Huh. So yeah, I'll get some 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 part ordered for inside there. That'll be a clarty job in this nice clean cab. <laughs> yeah, there's one to look forward to. So it's three o'clock now. Um, I've got a solar solar seventy five to service. I'm just trying to not kill my van on the way out of here. The road is absolutely mint, apart from this last quarter of a mile. Um, yeah, I've got a Solar 75 to go and service. Um, and he wants us when I'm in the area, and to be honest, where it's at, this is as close to being in the area as I've been all year, so I'll go down and, and do that. It will mean a late finish, but um, it'll get that 
job out from under my feet because I really, I mean, I'm going to be coming back here anyway, um, but I don't know what I'll have on when I come back here, so go and get that service done. So, yeah, five to four when I get there, an hour and a half servicing it, hopefully. Or half five, and then from there it'll be an hour and a half back. Half six, seven o'clock. It's gonna be a late finish. It's gonna be a late finish. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll catch you when I get down there. Once I've nursed this van out of here. Another nice spot to work. Look, the view right up the lakes. Look, beautiful. And then round here, the sea. Probably about as far west in Cumbria as you can go now. What a tour we've had today. Solar 75. The service. Oh, that was lucky. That nearly fell off. I was much out of shim to go in that quick hitch on that digger. Uh, what's this getting? I think everything. Or as much as I can get out of those boxes. So we'll kennel it up, set up the travel motors and uh, go from there. Well, it did fire straight up to be fair, like. Um, so yeah, I've got a new filter head to go on here, so we'll do away with that inline filter. You can see it's fair clout up. Um, it did sort of start up with a bit of reek which is to be expected, I suppose, with that fuel filter being the colour that it is. A uh, little Yanmar engine. So I'm fairly familiar with these now. The belt tension like. Belt tension's loose. Get that nipped up. Doesn't have air conditioning anymore. Yeah, it's got this here so the throttle dial doesn't work which is under that armrest there so we've got this assembly here so to rev it up you push the button pull it and that revs it up push it back in revs it back down um i'm sure they were at like an emergency uh rev on the solar 140s 150s you can sometimes find them you can lock it in place Anyway, uh, I didn't pay much attention. 6,892 hours. Lovely. Just farm spec, in it? <laughs> right, I've got my, I've got my final drive set up. I'll drain them. I can imagine we'll see some stuff coming over there like oh. just about done I've been hunting all over for this pilot filter I'm not overly familiar with these solars although looking over it it seems very similar to the sort of DX80s and then those similarities pass on to the 85s so I found it because obviously on the 80s and the 85s it's sort of mounted between the cab and the engine but uh, I'll get this spun off and that'll be all filters changed. There was something else I need to do. Oh, I just need to put oil in the hubs. Don't let me forget to put oil in the hubs. Got a new filter head. That's gonna blow away. I'm really struggling with the wind here. Got a new filter head on, new engine oil, two fuel, air filters. Oh, I've got the return filter to do as well. So I've actually still a little bit to go, better crack on. Need to adjust that fan belt as well, which is the same as the 80s and the 85s. 
where you slacken the alternator off and put a pry bar in and tension it up. Just a little bit less accessible on this fine look of it. Come in the van where it's not blown a gale. That's that machine all serviced up, hubs done, return filter, pilot filter, engine oil, two fuel filters and two air filters all serviced up. I was talking to the customer there, he's talking about putting a slurry lagoon in with it so hopefully uh, he'll be able to use it for that. He's got a hydraulic quick hitch he's got to put on it as well so yeah. Right, I'm going to uh, head away because it's like quarter to six now and I've got an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes drive to get home so it will be a late finish. I did sort of think half five but uh, we one thing or other being on the phone and whatnot. Um, I'm 15 minutes behind schedule so we'll pack up. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't already click the subscribe button, subscribe if the channel doesn't cost you any money uh, and it just helps me or helps YouTube see that my videos are worth watching and it sort of puts them into other people's video feeds and one thing or another so that'd be great. I'd be grateful if you haven't already clicked that subscribe button. Right, see you in the next one.